Pat, you coach all the way down to three-year-olds. Yeah. How do you, how do you coach three-year-olds? What at that age are you trying to to get across to them? How do you teach? How do you teach a three-year-old soccer? What We're quite difficult with you. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I, I remember we had Swansea down once. Okay. And one of the chairman came up and he said, "And what do you do?" I said, "I do three-year-olds." And he said to me, "Do you know what? It's like herding cats." And that is the greatest uh, explanation I've ever heard of it. And it's exactly what it is. It's herding cats, but. But what you do is you devise games uh, in which it's just like what we do is like a storybook games um, like Spongebob, um, Toy Story, Pirates, you name it, we do it. So their imagination takes over. Once you get their imagination involved, you stick a ball in and then you uh, stipulate that, okay, this represents this. Like, for instance, a soccer ball is a cannonball. Uh, and you turn these little things in in the way that you want to do it and then you just run with it and you watch the joy in the kids' faces as they play, then that in itself is a reward. And it should, especially at that, that age, three, four, five, it should be nothing but fun. I've seen it, believe you me, I've seen it already, uh, where I've had a four-year-old kid that was great and he was, his touch on the ball was good. He, he had, but he, he was serious. And then I saw his family um, coaching him after we, we did our session. And they was coaching him like he was a 20-year-old kid. And he's four. So, so I made a beeline to him. I said, look, your son's got one of the best touches I've seen. He's got great skill on the ball. But I guarantee you, when he gets to 17, you won't even see him because he's going to be burnt out because he's not having fun. And you could see the way that the parent adjusted it was, no, you've got to do it this way. No, you Obviously, they've got to learn the right way. But it's like everything else in life, a time and a place. The where, why and when. You need those three W's. And if you ain't got that, forget it. You know, you might have a great 12-year-old that's playing gold, platinum. But I guarantee you, at 16, he's, he's dropped out. Yep. He's gone. Because of the pressures. And, and you don't need that pressure on kids. They're trying to learn. So, for a three to five year old, it's just fun. Just just do it. Go out and have fun. Um, then six year olds to seven year olds. We're now looking at them still having fun, um, but we're doing uh, technical parts of games. So, so what, what we try to do then is to get them mentally... Uh, attuned to what we expect from them in the future. Uh, and what I mean by that is simple games where they've all got they've got balls in the middle, they've got to run out, get the ball, take it back. There's no um, coaching like you should have done that. Obviously, we say to them before, um, what I try to do is get them into, like, for instance, a drag back. I'd say to them, let's, let's learn a jack drag back. Right, now you've got to do that in there. But if they make a mistake, you don't say, hey, what are you doing? You just let them go with it. But these games are now more structured, which gets them into that mindset of um, this is what's going to come following. But again, it's all about fun. Uh, and it's about them, um, again, pushing themselves. Make them a better version of themselves all the time. Uh, and if I could do that, and, and if the parents can do that, then we're winners. They, they, they ain't always going to be, I think that's something like half a percent or 1% of all kids that play at turn, that go training at that age, turn into professionals. So you don't take the mathematician to realise there's a lot that don't. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so on that journey, it's got to be a happy journey. It's got to be a journey that they love to come to training. They love to learn. And more importantly, they love to fail. Yeah. Uh, and they see that you're seeing them fail. But you're not, you're not pulling them on it. You're just letting them go. Yeah. Um, so that's basically what we do there, you know? And we and we talked about the uh, earlier in our conversations about the importance of of failing and learning from your mistakes and, and not being afraid to fail. And you just mentioned now that there's uh, there's a time and a place for certain things. At what point in a player's development should something like winning a particular game? When should that matter? Is there an age? Okay, three, four, five. Okay, we shouldn't really concern ourselves with results. Let's well, worry about making sure it's fun for the kids. 
let's worry about making sure they get the fundamentals of the game down. What's that next stage? When can we start to worry about winning? Well, personally speaking, I mean, I have, um, as part of my job, I've looked into the academies um, in Europe, um, much of Gladbach, uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Arsenal, uh, you name it. I've looked at them all. And all of them, even on a professional level, they don't even look at scores. Um, because scores are an indicator to them as to who wins and who don't. Um, I'm thinking that you're looking at 12-year-old, if I had my way, um, then all games up until that age group, because that's when they get into the tactics of the game, 12-year-old, uh, is enjoy it. Have no pressure. Learn. You're going to, to win games, but nobody cares. There's not a league. There's not a, a standings chart where you can say, well, they're better than us purely on the fact that they stuck a ball in it more than us. Yeah, because that doesn't tell you the story. It don't tell you the story of the kids um, learning. It don't tell you the story of the kids' development. It doesn't tell you anything. It just tells you that one day one team got three goals and you got one. Um, and it happens every week, every every weekend. And and so, to my mind, uh, even though it isn't at the moment, um, you're looking at 2010s now going in, uh, which, which are seven-year-olds, where the score matters. I'd like to see in America where it doesn't matter about the score up until they're 12. Um, purely for the development of the kids, Purely, not the coach. And that's another bone of contention that I've got. So it's it's the coaches who are driven to win because they're worried about what the parents might think of them. And, and so it's, it's an ever-decreasing circle. You know, I've got to win. I've got to win. Otherwise, they're not going to respect me as a coach. They think I don't know what I'm doing. Instead of having belief in the coach who's qualified who's gone through the system, who knows what he's doing, and saying, I'm handing him over to you, and I'm going to give give my child his your custody. So, to that end, have them develop, have them play, and look at the pressures in the kids. I call it the Russian gym, gymnast syndrome. When you had Olga Korbut, like, just came out the womb, and she's got to win an Olympic medal. You know what I mean? And what did she do? Dropped out, didn't she? So it's you know small term gains for long term losses. It should be reversed. And when it's reversed, then you'll see United States, who have the commodities, they've got millions of kids here. Then you'll see United States flourish. You'll see them win a World Cup. I have no doubt they'll win a World Cup. But they need to first get past themselves. Coaches need to get past their egos, their pride, and they need to look at the big picture. We're dealing with kids, and we're dealing with kids learning. Uh, I mean, sometimes when I see teams win 20, 21 nil, um, I, I look out on the field and I think, where's the learning? There's no learning going on there. But they can go back and say they won, they can pick up a nice little shiny trophy and say that we're winners, but it don't mean a thing. You know, um, try to learn within the game, um, no matter what it is. Always have the kids uh, learning technique. Anywhere, just make them learn, 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 but fun with it. And once we get that pressure out, once that pressure of failing and losing is gone, I guarantee you, you'll see America and the American kids flourish. And that's what it's about. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. Then you'll get, it will then go into uh, the American um, national teams, where the national teams become better. And then we've literally not done anything. Yep. They've just they've just got the parents in line, they're in line, then after, it actually would make their job simple. They could then say, well, I'm not going to coach my team for um, a defensive strategy because we're playing a real big, strong team. They can beat us, so I'm going to play 10 at the back. Uh, but the kids ain't learning a thing, but I don't get scored on 20 times. 
And so all that gets alleviated. So now the, the coaches will be more uh, less stressed. That transpires onto the kids less stressed, which eventually, even if the parents don't buy into it originally, comes around to the parents. And once that becomes generational, that's when you'll see it flourish. But, you know, to my mind, there's a lot of people who run these leagues, who make money from the leagues, who are going to say, how am I going to make money now? What am I going to do? They have to find ways of doing it. There's ways around it. Uh, they have to get their heads together and say, let's do it. Like putting them in flights, for instance, or anything like that. So, so there's ways of doing it, but they don't really want to do it because they're thinking, well, no, I'm not getting the money. Again, coming back to the money aspect as well. So there's a lot of things going on that can change. There's a lot of things that can happen. Is that America needs to get together again. I guarantee you, people listening to this or, or looking at this are probably throwing things at the te television right now <laughs> because they're saying they don't know what you're talking about. It, it's not about that stuff. That's what makes America great is that you've got opinions. But what should make it stronger is that everybody has, has similar opinions, a similar mindset, but with the parameters that you can explore anything you want within it, but just have the mindset. Yeah. And once we get to that, you know, it'll work. I mean, it'll, as we're recording this, you know, the U.S. has a couple of pretty big World Cup qualifi qualifiers um, coming up, and um, you know, maybe we're in, a, in in actual danger of missing out on a World Cup if these games don't go our way. Um, you know, it's, and it's easy for people to to look at the success that Major League Soccer has had, and uh, but I don't know if we're seeing those returns necessarily at the national team level. I don't know if we're producing the level of player that we should be producing for a country of our size and wealth um, and just the, the sheer number of kids that we have playing youth soccer. So it really seems to me like there is a problem in this country developing players. Um, do you feel that maybe some of the, the failures at our uh, international level or even our domestic leagues, do, do a lot of these failures come from uh, just this, this poorly ingrained way that we try to develop our youth? Yeah. Well, you know, every building there's a foundation. And, and unfortunately, in most countries, because I deal with the foundation, no player comes up to me when he's 19 and say, thank you for, for coaching me when I was really... They look at that player there and go, I'm a great coach because I've just coached him. He's 18. And everything else is forgotten about, which is I have no problem with. Uh, but that is the problem in itself, that, you know, the foundation isn't there. And, and I think they need to give more credence to having better low-level youth coaches. And more, more so than higher level, let's get, let's get trophies. It, they should be really pinpointing the low-level teams, uh, low-level ages. And start there. But start the right way. Start the right way, deal with him the right way. So that coming up, you know everything's in place. You know you're not dealing with a kid who's scared to make a mistake. And, and, and that, like I said, will blend into the United States doing it and, and playing better. I mean, Sweden, for instance, one of the smallest countries in the world, they've probably got a population of two, maybe three, you know. But, no, just sure it's Swedish people. But, <laughs> But, I mean, they, you can fit Sweden probably in Ventura, uh, in, in the California realm. So, but they have per capita the highest um, professionals than a lot of other countries, five, ten times larger than them, because they do exactly that. They have a system where it's not, it's not pressured, where the kids are free to explore. Again, expression. Um, and, and that gives you... Game awareness. A lot of kids, when they get older, they've got everything in place, but they ain't got any game awareness. Uh, decision making is poor. Consequently, they play poor at a professional level. Uh, Sweden, they, they, they knew that. They saw that. Well, it's up to the other countries to get the best of even little parts, the best of what Sweden's doing, the best of what um, um, Spain's doing. That's what England's doing, France. And then they've got hundreds of years invested in it. 
You don't have to do one model. Make a model that's the best part of all of it. And then use it here. But don't be ashamed to use it. I think America a little bit like, oh, we don't want to copy. We're, we're big, like we're going to do it our way. Well, no. It's already been done. It's already been written. You know, why reinvent the wheel? It's already there. Learn from it, deal with it, and go forward. But go forward united, not having some some group that don't want to do it because the parents don't want to do it. And I've had that said to me just recently. I spoke to a referee, and I said to the referee, why are you playing 9v9 when it should be 7v7? Why haven't you got a build-out line? And why, by the way, are you heading when you're not supposed to head until you're 10? And his answer to me was, because some of the parents didn't like it. That's the, that's the kind of thing that we've got to get rid of, is that mindset that the parents are driving um, what really everybody else knows should happen because they're, they're, they're stoic in what they believe in, which is wrong. Yeah. It, 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 you know, they're just creating their own disaster down the road. And, and, and you know, like I was saying to you, you're going to get a 4v4 situation um, at the younger level if they don't change it where you've got people screaming at the kid. Why? Because they've only got one in three chance of picking their kid up and making mistakes. Instead of the old days. In the old days, in retrospect, if the parents aren't there, it's going to be better. Because they, they're, they're amplifying the parents. Again, coming back, they've got to take a step back. Yep. So that's how I see it. And I just hope that it happens, you know. And, and, but we've got to make the decisions ourselves. Well, clubs have got to make decisions themselves. Do we take the gamble? Do we say, there ain't going to be a trophy at the end of this? Parent participation is minimal. Let them play. Yeah. They've got to be brave. And they've got to say, we're going to do it. Because that is how, at the end of the day, not from what I'm saying, but from being tried and tested in already in Europe, um, came out many hours. I know people can say, we said earlier on about the European model. Um, there are some things wrong in Europe, um, but based off of what they saw in Europe, they put it here, just to clarify that, mm -hmm. uh, not knowing that the Americans have 15, 16 different sports they play, um, and, and that you've got to be a little bit more choosy with trying to put something uh, very difficult on kids that don't know the basics. Yep. But everything else is good. You know, everything else is, is tried and tested. So why not do it?